how long have you been living here in Minnesota? I've been here my whole life. I was born here in Minnesota. That means I've been here for, that's right, 37 years. December 7th, it'll be 38 years. You might want to make a note of that day. But how long have you been here? A couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years. Were you born here as well? But guess what? You and I are complete rookies when it comes to being in Minnesota. We are total noobs. Now, I know an old guy like me should not be using the word noob. Sorry. But if you don't know what it means, it's somebody who is new to something. And yes, you and I are both noobs when it comes to living here in Minnesota and Minnesota history. Even my great, great, great grandmother, who still walks five miles a day, is a noob to Minnesota in Minnesota history. Why? Because archaeological evidence shows us that people have been living in Minnesota since at least 12,000 years ago. They aren't the Dakota or the Ojibwe though. We're talking about ancient people who lived here when there were still glaciers. We interrupt this Mr. H video to bring you a weather alert. A glacier warning is in effect from 18,000 to 12,000 years ago across the state except for a little corner of southeast and southwest Minnesota. This glacier warning will remain in effect until 8,000 to 10,000 years ago when these glaciers will recede, which means they're slowly melting. Massive lakes, large piles of glacial till, animals returning to the area with humans migrating behind them are to be expected. These migrating people are expected to stay as the ancestors of today's Native Americans. Stay tuned to youtube.com backslash Sock Mr. H, the Sock Mr. H channel, for more details as events unfold. Now, back to your regular program. Okay, first of all, what's an archaeologist? It's a historical scientist who studies past human life and activities by examining physical evidence such as tools, fire pits, ruins from dwellings, or ancient shelters. Key word there, evidence. Evidence is the material on which a judgment or conclusion may be based. What evidence is that, that you've been in our classroom? Well, your artifact for one thing, documents like your homework, Photos, paintings, drawings, interviews, rock carvings, those are all forms of historical evidence. And, and that's not it. There's a huge list, but that's just a, a, a few things. Archaeologists study people from the past by looking at the evidence they left behind. In the case of ancient Minnesotans, these people were around before writing, so you only have evidence to go on. Archaeologists study these people from thousands of years ago. How do they do it? They use science to figure out how old things are, and then use historical knowledge to make theories of what happened. They use the scientific method to do all of this. Now, the scientific method consists of the following. Ask a question, do background research, create a hypothesis. A plan is then made for conducting the experiment. And as the experiment is going on, data, otherwise known as information, is collected. Observations are made and the data is analyzed to see how it fits the hypothesis. The scientist then reports their findings and often the process is repeated numerous times with similar experiments and similar data, but always different ways of analyzing it. Okay, so here's how an archaeology project might go. Somebody is digging through the soil and they come across a piece of a clay pot. They keep digging and they maybe they find a piece of a bone. Then they find an arrowhead and a few more bone fragments, so they stop. 
they contact their local archaeologist, and really there there are local archaeologists in, in your actual neighborhood, and, and that person will come out to investigate. After they look over the artifacts, the archaeologist will probably have a bunch of questions about what's going on. Remember, like we say in class, smart people ask questions. Successful scientists, successful historians ask lots and lots of questions. Where is this bone from? What was it from? How did it get there? Is this arrowhead usable for hunting? What's this clay pot made of? What was the process they went through to create it? Because not all clay pots are the same. Next, they'll do some background research. The archaeologist will read books, research by other archaeologists, and see if these artifacts are similar to other ones that have been found elsewhere, either in Minnesota or in Wisconsin or anywhere across the entire world, actually. Depending on what they find in their background research, the archaeologists will create a hypothesis about what they think the newly found artifacts tell us about the people who used to live in this location. Then, an experiment will take place. The archaeologist will test and examine the artifacts while also undergoing a complete archaeological dig of the surrounding area. As they do this, the next step in the process is taking place. You remember what that is? Hmm, what is it? Oh, that's right. Gathering evidence and data. Lots of it. Tons of it. The more data, the more sources, the better an understanding they get. That goes for you too when you do your research. The more sources, the better. Okay, so they take all of this evidence, all of this data, and they analyze it. That means they compare it, they contrast it, they examine it, they dissect it, and they try to understand everything about it that they can. After all of this experimenting, all of this data collection, all of this analysis, they present their findings. They share what they learned with the rest of the world. More importantly, they share what they learned with other historians, other archaeologists. Their report might be used by others in their own research and in future experiments. And, like every good experiment and every good research project, once they're finished with it, they'll actually have even more questions, many more questions that will fuel future experiments and future discovery and future research. It's one big circular process that leads us to bigger and a better understanding of the world in which we live and about the people who are here now and the people who are here before us. It's one big circular process that leads to a bigger and better understanding of the world in which we live and the people who were here before us. I'm gonna be sick. I got a fly on my head. Gather what? Let's just scroll down.